Good afternoon, everyone. It's Brian Caprice from Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to this week's Nadex Weekly Charts and Analysis. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying um, allergies have gotten the better of me this week, so if I if I do any coughing, I want to apologize right off the bat. Um, I'm going to try to do the presentation with a um, cough drop in, and hopefully <clears throat> that keeps me from clearing my throat 8 million times, but yeah, I don't know what it is, or what, what, what tree just dropped pollen, but I'm losing that battle, so anyway, it is April 12th, 2022. We are flying through April. Um, it's you know we're we're right here at like tax time, although it's crazy. We're we're at tax time, but not a lot of people are talking about it right now. So um, normally a lot my it's you know one of those things that everyone's like oh tax time tax time, but nobody's really talking about it. So anyway, uh, there's definitely been some headlines today to talk about this morning. Uh, some interesting market, um, kind of a re you know re I don't know a re inflating for lack of a better word of oil. Right. Um, I don't know if you guys have been watching that at all, but uh, oil is definitely um, moving a bit more. And again, I, I assumed that that was what was going to happen this week. Um, I just want to go on the record. I'm not happy about it going higher. Uh, I don't like paying you know higher prices for gas than anybody else does. But I, I kind of had that you know kind of had that opinion by looking at the charts. Um, with that said, um, for those of you that are new, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, I do these presentations on a weekly basis just to give you guys some analysis, um, a different look, a uh, different take on things. Uh, I've been trading since about 2000. So seen some ups, downs, sideways, uh, definitely some rights. And, and I feel like even sometimes uh, some lefts, right? Not that the chart can go backwards, but I feel like we've seen it sometimes with some of the volatility we've seen over the last 20 years. Um, I am more of an intraday based trader. Uh, I do understand long term trading. Um, obviously, wealth management is something that I'm, I'm definitely into as well. Um, I did spend some time as a financial advisor. I uh, realized very fast that I couldn't use the skills that I had the knowledge for, so I left that arena. Um, I can say that I worked on Wall Street, <clears throat> but I did not work on the the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I did walk past it every day. I did actually work on the wall, you know, the the actual Wall Street in the financial district. Uh, the bull is actually right outside, but um, the coolest part was I used to walk past the New York Stock Exchange every morning. So I got to you know have lunch with traders and and go to happy hour with traders and and you know dinner at night. So. It was a very cool experience uh, when I was in that arena, um, uh, the advisory arena. I got to learn a lot about bonds, which is something that the average Joe just never gets any really introduction or kind of any education in. So it was a great way to round out kind of my trading. Um, and again, I started with stocks, traditional options like most people, found currencies, love the the 24-hour nature of it, the leverage of it, really kind of the the idea of a, a global market um, interested me the most because everything is really interrelated. Um, you know, it was before... It kind of like the, the light bulb went off for me before like globalization was actually a term that people used. All right. Uh, learn to trade futures as well. Um, I love strategies. Uh, I'm a big strategies guy. I like taking strategies, pulling them apart, putting them back together, seeing if I can make them better. Um, so if you guys have any questions about anything I covered today, you're more than welcome to email me. I'll give you guys my email address at the end. Um, yeah. So that's it. So let's just jump into things. All right. Uh, before we begin looking at any of the charts or anything like that, I do have to cover the Nadex risk disclaimer. Uh, as you guys all know, that trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for all. That that members risk losing the cost end of the transaction, including fees. Now you should carefully consider whether trading on Nadex is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. M none of the material presented here is to be construed as a solicitation, recommendation, or offer to buy any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC, and Nadex is a registered trademark of Crypto.com. Um, haven't heard a lot, but we will hear a lot soon, I'm sure. Um, again, pretty pretty exciting time that we're in. Um, right about now is when Bernard is speaking, and she is what I'm going to call the Crypto Czar. So, Again, we may get some headlines. There may be some movement in that arena, and it would be awesome to see how this year unfolds as we expand more. Um, again, Nadex gets, I, I can't say we, because I don't work for Nadex, but um, you know the offerings that Nadex is going to have um, in the crypto arena. Um, again, it's, it's just another asset, another another thing that we can trade, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, <clears throat> so the agenda for today is we're going to cover the upcoming news events. Uh, what I mean by upcoming news events, uh, I don't have like a direct line uh, into Putin or anything. Like He's not telling me when he's crossing the border, but what I mean by this is the planned global economic news events, right? All the countries in the world actually have an interesting one tonight. Um, it's not so much a Nadex um, type event um, on the New Zealand because they don't they don't offer it there, but 
again, whenever a country is raising interest rates, there's implications that you know can spread far and wide because of it. So we'll cover and, and kind of you know see where the the best opportunity is for the rest of this week. Then we'll dive into the indices. Now the indices are they're kind of interesting this morning. Um, Gentlemen, made some comments. You know, the VIX has been kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, the indices are not where I think that they technically should be, um, based off of what we're seeing in the VIX. There's also some headlines that we got right before we started today. Um, and as you guys know, you know, I I use TradingView for all the analysis for this. Um, I pay for some of the for some of the uh, the data, but I don't pay for all of it. So I don't pay for data for for a live VIX. So it's about 10 minutes behind. So when I started. The VIX had not popped at all, and maybe it was just because of the delay. Uh, Putin made comments right before we started about how that the peace talks have come to a standstill, or they're actually, I guess what his term was, I guess dead end. And he said that he vows to pursue the rest of the war, you know, to continue the war. Normally, when you have somebody saying, yeah, we're just going to keep, you know, stomping on Ukraine um, in a fashion that is not, you know, becoming of a, you know, a normal human being, um, you would see the VIX pop a bit more, and it didn't really have any effect. So, Kind of interesting. I'm curious to see now that's been 10 minutes later if we've seen that pop. Um, but we'll go into the indices. We'll kind of see where they're at, see where the turning points are. Everything this morning was pulling back in the 50% ranges. We'll kind of look to see what kind of where we where we could see some you know potential setups. Cover Forex, as I said, there's a, an interest rate rise tonight. It's not a net space pair. Um, I'll mention it and kind of why it's important. Uh, but we'll see. We're having that kind of a reversal of what we saw in the yen yesterday. And uh, we'll talk about other potential errors for the week. And then last but not least, commodities. Um, Yesterday morning, I said, hey, listen, if you're looking for week-long positions, I like oil long. It's now up 7 or $8 in one day. So, um, yeah, commodities has been a, obviously a crazy market. You know, natural gas continuing to grind higher the last I looked at it. Um, and even gold and silver starting to spike because of some of what we've heard. Um, inflation is up to 8.5%. Um, we haven't seen inflation like this since 1981. I joked earlier today that I was only six. So I don't really remember what it was like the last time that it was like this. But I know that I'm old. Um, I tell people that I'm old all the time. So when you when you when you think about something that is so far back that I can't even remember it, it's been a really long time, like ancient, right? Um, but yeah, we're at 8.5, um, yeah, 40 year highs. We haven't seen this type of inflation since 1985, and we had some headlines today that it may actually even be getting worse. So we'll see. Um, I did read an interesting article a little well, like literally 30 minutes ago that talked about how Biden has one option. And one option only to, you know, basically help with inflation. Um, it's an interesting one. I don't know that he'll do it. And it would be, I think, the wrong message if he does it. But he's got one option and it could drop it maybe one to one and a half or maybe even two, they said, uh, percentage points of inflation. Not that seven, not that seven or six, you know, seven or 6.5 is not still horrible, but, you know. Getting 1% off would be a little bit nice, right? So with that, let's bring it across and uh, let's look at kind of where the releases are going to be. All right. So first things first this morning, uh, and again, I'll click it so it's fresh. First things first this morning, we got our economic sentiment and, you know, it was down a little bit, basically meaning that, oh man, the economy is in trouble over in, in the EU. And we kind of knew that, you know, with the war, it's obviously something that's, you know, uh, right in the forefront, uh, in their face about, you know, what needs to be done and, and what has to change. Um, again, is the euro down huge? Not really. I mean, euro dollars down 20, euro pound is down 20. I think that's really where the, the, the true strength of that is actually going to be at. Um, CPI came out for the U.S. Now, it is a red number. It came in at 0.3. And people are like, that's awesome. Yeah, it came in 0.3. But we know that the problem isn't like standard just, you know, services like haircuts, right? We have to look at the whole CPI. The two biggest problems that everybody's having right now is one, the cost of gasoline, right? and food. Well, when you take your core, you remove those two things. So although it's not as high as expected, it's still a positive number. It's still moving in a direction nobody likes. But they confirmed that again, last month it was a 0.8. We accelerated, we went to 1.2 in CPI month over month. So again, even though there was a, a 0.25 interest rate rise, it's accelerating. Again, showing that Ballard was 100% right in his call for 0.5 for that first one. Um, so we'll see. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, you know, Bernard is speaking. Actually, she she spe I was wrong. She's it's twelve ten. She speaks. So she's going to start speaking in one minute. I think that could provide some volatility for you crypto traders out there. Uh, bond auction not really worried about. And then New Zealand tonight is actually forecast to raise 0.25. Um, basically, what it does is it's putting it. Um, 
it's really putting the New Zealand yen in an interesting spot to become the new carry trade. Because uh, right now, this will put, you know, any of, of any of the major nations, it puts the New Zealand at the top as far as interest rates go for, you know, obviously, you know, loaning money there. Um, yen still obviously effectively at zero. So, you know, even on like your like high return, you're not necessarily seeing 1.25 as a common thing. But again, using the New Zealand yen currency pair, large money now can get an interest rate on a daily basis um, in an extremely liquid market. So it is kind of interesting seeing that reflate again. Um, are they going to be the ultimate choice? I don't, I don't think so. I think it'll be the pound, most likely the pound still, uh, maybe the Euro, but again, I think the pound, the pound has a little bit better economic data than the Euro. So eh, we'll see where it goes. Um, I mean, it could be the United States. It could be, but it tends not to be. Um, we'll see how far the, the Fed is willing to, to take it. Um, Besides that, looking at everything else, this is that headline that I was talking about that Putin basically says, listen, we're dead in the talks. Um, Putin says Ukraine has deviated from agreements achieved in Istanbul. And that's something that they've said a couple times now. And again, in particular, uh, Crimea, right, or Crimea, the, they agreed that they were going to talk about that in 15 years at a summit. And then suddenly it was back on the table again when they had that next meeting. I knew that that wasn't going to be a good thing. Um, it's, that was kind of one of those things. It's like, all right, that's clear for a while. As soon as that was back on the table, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to be good. Um, it says the end of military operations in the campaign so depends on the intensity of fighting. So it's kind of like if you just fold peacefully, we're good. If you want to you know, fight hard, then we're going to match as you're you know, tank for tank there. So we'll see. Um, Putin says it was right to start Russia's operation in the Ukraine. OK, um, so, yeah, he's still following you know, his same path. So, uh, like I said. I think he's still trying to get those two reasons. I'm, I'm curious now if Marpol is going to be in there as well. Um, there was reports today that it doesn't have much time left, that it will probably fall. And they're expecting it to fall, that there's no way to support the resistance forces there. They're almost out of ammunition. There's not much else they're going to be able to do. And um, yeah, it's one of those really, really, really unfortunate situations. Um, they've been defending themselves. Um, but if you've picked up a weapon and fought against the military, when you don't have ammunition, they take you as an active combatant still. So, I don't know. Heart goes out to those people. Um, yeah, it's not the, not the best of situations. But, you know, interestingly enough, looking at the VIX, he made those comments, and the VIX has not popped. Even with that 10 additional minutes now, the VIX is not popping. So, very interesting. We're going we're gonna to intensify in some sections and no response from the VIX. Um, typically, see a lot more from that. Uh, going to tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow we got all kinds of things. We have the pound yet again. And again, that's quite a big forecasted jump in the pound. As I said, I do think that the pound is more set up for to, you know, to be to retake its position as the carry trade. Um, right now, New Zealand will be ahead until the pound gets up there. But remember, the pound's already done three raises and their year over year is going up to a 6.7. OK, um, yeah, it's going up another 0.5. That's a lot. Right. That's a lot. Uh, and then we see PPI, which, again, PPI is one of the another gains of inflation. Look at this one, going from 0.8 to 1.1, going from 0.2 to 0.5, also showing an acceleration, also not great. Then we have at 10 o'clock tomorrow, the monetary policy report for Canada. Now, again, the, the dollar CAD right now is kind of um, interesting that we've had so much movement. It's been such a volatile market for the oil right now. CAD's kind of getting you know pulled around like a bungee cord. Um, was waiting for them to rise, you know, what was waiting for them and had been talking about how, listen, I, they're going to raise, they're going to raise, they're going to raise, they're going to raise. All the data's been great. The forecast is right now that they're doing a 0.5 raise. Um, interesting that, you know, again, three 25s in a row for over the pound and it's still raising, R25 and it's still raising to 40 year highs. And what does something like Canada do? They go 0.5. Um, and now the United States was like, maybe we can do a 0.5. So interesting that Canada's going that far. That should absolutely provide some insight. Um, the way you're going to have to play that one, though, again, very, you know, for currency traders out there, CAD yen will be a great one to play it with because, again, it's a very strong CAD move and it's a very, you know, yen is obviously weak right now. Retracing a bit today uh, to make up for yesterday. Dollar CAD may be a little bit harder because, again, if oil suddenly starts to tank, that sucks all the strength out of this one. Today, it's kind of a double double scenario where, hey, listen, we're one day out. We expect the interest rates to rise as well as oil's up $7 in the last 24 hours. So, Always great things for the CAD, okay? Um, and then tomorrow night, we have unemployment change, unemployment rate expected to drop, um, actually on both fronts, from you know 77 to 30, and then from 4 to 3.9. Aussie is also in an area where they are starting to, again, start to look at probably rates increasing. 
Um, they have a little bit of a contagion issue right now. Um, what I mean by that is, um, again, can it, it's basically uh, China, right? China locking down. China has a spillover effect into the Australian economy um, with it locking down. It's something that not a lot of people are talking about right now, and they absolutely should be. Um, it's going to cause all kinds of ripple effects throughout the world. Um, and we're not really talking about it right now. Okay. With that said, again, all C trades at night are awesome. They're some of my favorite things you can do, particularly at 930. Um, unfortunately for this one, this is one I'd like to trade. I actually have a, a, a lacrosse game uh, myself if I'm able to function tomorrow, if allergies are not killing me still. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a good one. Um, if you guys are up, definitely worth trading and listening to hear what they have to say. Now, Thursday, we have the main refinancing rate for the euro. And you see the forecast is still zero. And again, their excuses of the, you know, the, the, the atrocities in the Ukraine and, and all that. Um, again, they are, you know, they are valid. I mean, Putin hasn't shown or made any comments about going beyond the Ukraine. He's looking for that buffer. Um, again, he'll poke, you know, it's not a, a NATO-based nation. And he knows what's going to happen if he actually tries to cross a border on a NATO-based nation. But they're still keeping their interest rates rather low. Um, there's a lot of talk, and again, we've seen inflation in Germany go higher. It's at 7.3, 7 right? Um, yeah, it's getting out of control there, too. And they've made comments recently about, hey, listen, we know the Ukraine's still going on, but inflation is starting to get to the point where it's really starting to hurt everybody, and it could have lasting effects. We probably, we probably need to do something about it rather soon. So although I don't think they're going to raise – I think 7.45 on Thursday morning, this monetary policy statement may highlight the fact that they are looking at raising at the next meeting, even if it's just a small minor amount of like a 0.25 or something like that. I think going into the statement, I think it's definitely something to watch out for, for the Aussie dollar, euro pound, and even the euro yen. It should be a euro strength based statement. Okay. So it could provide long opportunities in the euro yen. And if you're not accustomed to how to play it, I mean, it is 7.45, so it is a little bit earlier in the morning, right? But again, it would be with those shorter duration contracts um, that you could go ahead and play it with, okay? Uh, but something like the year again would probably be pretty decent to play it. Uh, then at 8.30, we have their press conference. And again, that's just going to be talking about whatever is inside the policy statement of questions. We have our core retail sales. Now, retail sales are expected to be much, much higher than they were before. Um, I think this is a very important one to watch because typically, right, if we saw like a 1.2 core retail sales number, right? That is so good. You're like, yes, that is awesome. Markets are going up, except this week. Okay. If it is a number that's really good, it's that scenario where good is bad, right? If retail sales goes up, it shows you that raising the interest rate did nothing to harm retail sales, which means they need to ratchet up the next interest rate, which again has the kind of opposite effect as far as what the overall markets are going to do. So, again, retail sales are expected to be better. If these came as a miss, maybe it comes in as a 0.7 and a 0.2, something along those lines, or a 0.3. Um, again, that's the question where you got to say, okay, is bad good? If it's bad, right? If retail sales numbers is crashing, is that good for, for stocks, right? And the reason why it's not necessarily good that people are not spending money, right, because of earnings, but it's good in the sense that the ECB is like, or not the ECB, the, um, the, um, the central bank, the Fed, right? Is going to look at that and be like, oh, listen, they're not spending as much. We're already, you know, the, 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 the 0.25 raise is already starting to affect the markets. That's the inflation that's starting to hurt the markets, really, not, not the Fed raise. But that's what they're going to use as an excuse. Then we have unemployment claims. Again, 172 is super, super low. University of Michigan consumer sentiment, again, expected to be a little bit lower. And then we have Messer speaking. Uh, Messer is speaking at what? Uh, workforce development. So, again, not necessarily a big market mover. And Friday, we have Empire State Manufacturing, which, again, it was horrible last time coming in at uh, minus 11.8. Uh, it was expected to be 6.5, which is also bad. Um, you can see traditionally, if you click this back to the history, traditionally we're much higher. I mean, we have 43s. I mean, on average here, we're high teens, 20s, right? It's probably the average. <laughs> the forecast is 0 0.9. So, yeah. And I think manufacturing is going to be something to watch out for. Um, really into the next couple of months. The reason why, as I mentioned the other day, and we saw today in some of the news headlines, right? China is now officially locked down, okay? If you remember back last year when we had oil that basically went to zero because we didn't have any space for it, we saw pictures of tankers being lined up, right? Because there was nowhere to put the oil. They were just sitting in the boats, right? I mean, talk about like an environmental like disaster waiting to happen. Now, 
we're seeing in China, Shanghai is locked down. They have ships, the container ships, right? They're not leaving the port. They're not letting them into the port because of the lockdown. So a lot of the goods and services that we would like are the goods that we want here that come and originate from Japan. We haven't seen the supply chain notices yet, but guess what? They are coming. Okay. Again, will that affect Empire State Manufacturing? Eh, probably a little bit. Um, it's been negative. We'll see the Philly one. This would be a horrible number, then the Philly one will be much, much better, right? Um, and then we can actually get, I guess, Chicago has one also. So, yeah, a lot there, you know, a lot there for this week. Now, a um, couple other things we talked about, uh, you know, obviously this is the big one right here, right? 8.5%, right? It's the biggest year over year increase since December 1950. I'm sorry, 1981. I do remember 1981, kind of. Prices have been driven up by bottleneck supply chains. Again, we just talked about that. Robust consumer demand. Again, we were, we did nothing for two years with COVID, so we're like, oh, God, give us more. Got to do it, right? And disruptions of global food and energy markets worsened by Russia's war. Now, a lot of this had already started to happen before that. Um, and again, this is why the situation, in my opinion, could have been handled differently. Russia produces a lot of food. They obviously produce a lot of energy in shipper places. So, yeah. Um, and, and again, I love the comments, but this guy's right. And the and the real hourly wages has dropped for the 12th straight month in a row. Right. So, yeah. Um, kind of shows you what inflation is and who inflation hurts the most. Right. Um, oh, here you go. Commodities price shock is driving top line inflation. Yes. I love when they say the obvious that everybody something that everybody already knows. Um, yeah. It, oh, look at this. The CPI data showed notable core inflation slowdown, right? I love I love when they do that. All items minus the ones that matter the most. Um, and if you think about the United States, which drives us, right? We want our gas so we can drive places, and we want we want to eat, right? Those are the two big things. I love when they talk about it. They did such a great job. They slowed down inflation, right, by raising the interest rate. Um, yeah. I'm most focused with core inflation when determining the path of monetary policy. Again, because she's rich. She doesn't care what gas prices are nor what it costs for you to eat. Um, and it's welcome to see moderation in core goods inflation. So again, this is why I do not believe that she will take over. Um, she was picked as, as VP and again, people vote with their wallets. Um, the things that matter most to people is not the core. Um, it's the the extra items. Like I said, what does it cost you for a tank of gas? You know, what does it cost you to buy food? Those are more important than her notable core inflation. So yeah, it just, Kind of proof that, um, yeah, she's not necessarily in touch with kind of where things are going. Um, they got to be able to control things like oil. And if there's no end to oil, I mean, here's the thing. You know, it's nice to say that this went down, but if oil gets out of control again, understand. And again, being a consumer like all of us are, when it costs more money to ship things, who does that get passed to? Does the company say, you know what, I'll just make less money on this, right? Or does that shipping cost typically get passed to the consumer? You guys know the answer to that one already. It's a rhetorical question, right? It obviously gets passed down to us, okay? So, yeah, I always love when they make these comments. Like, yep, state the obvious. Yeah, we know the commodity prices of driving it. But if you don't fix the commodity price thing, everything else will also have the same problems, okay? Um, and again, God, God knows what's going to happen with the supply chain stuff. Um, all right, so with that said, let's jump over. So... Here's the VIX. The VIX, it's funny. Okay. I think this is hysterical. The VIX, Putin says, yep, we're going to continue the war. Nothing's happening. VIX doesn't really do anything. It just kind of shrugs it off and stands here. Bernard starts speaking about inflation. That's great that it worked, and it starts to move higher. <laughs> Very funny how that's happening. And whenever we look at the VIX, okay, I get questions about the VIX. I've been getting more emails about the VIX. Again, VIX is just kind of a volatility fear index. It's based off the options on the S&P 500. Right now, and again, we saw last week, right? We saw the VIX up 7%, 10%, and everything was down like 2%, right? <clears throat> As it should be. Right now, it's down 6% worth of fear. And the indices at best are up half a percent. The Russell's up a little bit. Again, the Russell could, you know, is a bit more flexible. But they're barely up. They're up half a percentage when we're down 6%. It's amazing how that works out, right? Now, over here, it was 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, and down here, we're at half a percent. So as far as the ES goes, um, kind of what we drew earlier today. We attended our morning session today. We talked about we had a huge initial burst up. Everybody thought it was great. Core inflation is down. Yes, the Fed's going to, yeah, it's working. And I talked about having a potential pullback. And, you know, we normally handle these on a 15-minute. 
And I mentioned, you know, we have sellers in a few different places here, and it's funny. I drew this black line here. It's not straight. It's not level. Um, level would be like that. And I just drew it and said, listen, this is where sellers came in, right around the 61.8. And magically, at, at 9.45 today, this 9.30 candle literally punched forward. It, it tagged my black line. So obviously, somebody knew that somebody attended this morning. I don't know. Maybe it was Buffett. Um, I don't know. I would be okay with Uncle Warren listening to our, our, our YouTube sessions. but. We literally tagged it to the, it literally ran right into it. And that was a reversal point. And I talked about having a target of 41.19 today being, you know, kind of a parabolic move. Everyone's like, yay, it's great, right? Got a little bit of a pullback. And I'm wondering if that was a 23 pullback. Let's see. Um, now nah, it's a little bit deep for a 23, right? A little bit deep for 23. Uh, but again, nice pullback. We were looking for reversals. One of the nice things about Nadex is had you, you know, decided to put on a position getting short at that nine o'clock window, right? When this went above, guess what? You didn't get stopped out. And yet right now, you can see two hours later, we're much, much deeper down. We've almost retraced the move fully. So although all that data is great, Bernard says, hey, listen, the world we've saved the world. Don't worry about core inflation is down, everybody. Why is this going straight down? Okay. It basically means that the market is looking at her and being like, what did she have in her coffee this morning? Right? But looks like we're approaching that level. I'd watch out for it again. Um, if, you, if we take the overnight top to bottom as well, I'm sorry, bottom to top, one big thing you can say is we're, we're starting to get really, really close to that 50. Um, the level that I pointed out, the 1944.19, actually this dark black line, you can see that it's really buried itself right between the 50 and the 61.8. Uh, I'll delete this so you guys can see it a little bit better, but literally right between the middle, you know, slice that right down, that's where this profit target is. So I'd expect some type of a basing level in there, question is do we you know do we take a reversal in there do we balance or do we continue to go lower um i would say i mean overall vix being down minus six these things should definitely be up more um uh, this is one of those things where kind of there's a little bit of a i don't want to say trickery but for lack of better word there's a little trickery going on in the market right now so it's pretty interesting but yeah i mean this is just a standard parabolic retracement you guys have seen me talk about this a million times i've done the webinar a few times for nadex at all um, and again, all it is really doing is it's going after kind of the emotional responses of retail traders versus that of an, um, you know, like an industrial size trader, um, the banks and institutions, what are they thinking with about it all? So again, it's pulling back great trade from this morning. I'd say watch that level. Um, I will say, you know, for later on the week, I mean, big levels to watch out for. We know that we got a little bit of a reversal here. Um, we had another level that we wanted to kind of, kind of look at, um, we marked this one off last week, so it hasn't changed too much. Kind of a small confirmation, right? We had an old Harry Potter on the side of base that used it, it used it. So I would say <clears throat> right now, where is it at? Um, 43.72, right? It's got to come all the way back down again. It's got to break through these lower lows. But if we can get through that 43.65 level, I think there could be a great little shorting opportunity. Maybe later in the week, it's about a one and a half days worth of movement. It could be something that we look at. Um, right now, the biggest things we got to get through is this kind of chop over here at 44.19, and then look for it to collapse down. And uh, again, best way to watch, best way to deal with this is really join, you know, join us for the morning show. We can kind of see where we are on an overnight basis. Um, but I would say major, major areas. Obviously, um, I'd be looking at this as a, and again, there's a, it's a dotted line, so we have an alert down here, but a break of 43.64. Uh, NQ. Um, I don't know if I could draw that really any better. Um, haven't hit my target yet. My target is right here. We're so close. Look at that. I missed it by just a little tiny bit, right? Um, but this was the same thinking. We had talked about that parabolic move. We had talked about a level that we had. Um, we hit this level at 845 right when we were talking this morning. Um, and it came back and grabbed the 50% retracement. And since that time, it has collapsed. Um, it's always great when it does that. It makes the analysis right now a little bit harder when the trade you talked about at 8:45 in the morning is out, <laughs> but again, we are approaching we are approaching the the, the target we talked about the 14,060. So 14,060 in itself is really the conservative exit on there. The reason why is that's where the basing is before the large spike, the emotional candle in it. I would say in this one again, we see that we have the 14,000. That's a large psychological level. That's something that the news, the media, a lot of people will start talking about. It's like, oh my god, we broke 14,000, right? Which will also provide some selling pressure. Um, similar to what we saw before, um, we have some levels down here, but there's not really, let's see, uh, let me put this horizontal on so we can get a good read on it. Um, oh. ah. 
we have this level right here. It's a level that's been hit a few times. It's done okay, and it's right in the middle. It kind of provides with, with, with two different things, okay? One, is it a potential reversal? And I would say yes. But two, if it comes down, it has been hit three times already. I guess one, two, three, four, if you don't want to count this little kind of pull up there. It's not a fresh level. Typically, when we see three, four hits, we're looking for the break of that level. I think the next time NQ gets down here, it's either going to be a nice little bounce, which again, will be to see off the confirmation. Or if we come down and we start basing in here, that will be a telltale sign to take this one short. And looking at the candles below it, look at this. That's awesome. That's more or less a racetrack up. It's not one candle, and there's a little tiny bit of pullbacks there, but I'm on a 15 minute. So it's it's a lot of ground. We can we could potentially go from 13 uh, 806, um, really all the way down to 100 points down to 13 508, right? So I mean, there's about 100 points worth of movement in there that we could grab. So let's bring this across. And again, we're not far from it right now, right? Uh, let's bring this across. There we go. All right. And again, all, all that is at the bottom. So a little bit for today, but it's an area, as I mentioned before. Um, and, and again, I'll just I'll draw the short one on there cause, just because there's the space right now, right? Uh, right there. But the reality of this one is uh, when price comes down, there could be a potential bounce off of 13, four, 13, 486, right? There could be a potential bounce, but God forbid it goes any lower. We're looking for shorts below there, a little Harry Potter trade, breaking below 13,809. And that's, again, that's a nice little rundown. It's about 100 points, 117 points back down again uh, in the other direction. So I like that one. Uh, I think that's a decent trade. Uh, let's remove this right here. Um, and again, I think I showed this this morning, but I'll do it again. Right there, you can see between the high and the low, right between the 50 and the 61.8 is where that profit target just happens to be. So could it reverse off of this in the afternoon, one o'clock again, we're getting to when traders are coming back line. Yeah, it could, it could. But if we start basing in here, look for a potential grind to the downside because really at the end of the day, yeah, your, your message about, oh, core's down, that's great. We're not talking about the core right now. We're talking about regular inflation. The two things that matter most right now are fuel, heating, you know, obviously heating too, but fuel, basically gasoline and food. If we have a food shortage, I don't care what my moderate is. If I can get band-aids at the same price I could last year, not as concerned about that. But if I try, if I have to buy apples or grapes at twice the price that I did last year, that, that bugs me, right? That bugs me. Okay. Why am? All right, here we go. So why am talked about that 50. It looks like this one, man. Whew. Talk about a trap trying to stop people out. Huge push up again. And again, this is why Nidix is great. Had you been looking at something, we talked about 34,500. I feel like I keep mentioning this number again and again. Yeah, we had the one kind of 45 window that was a little spike up and down to kind of whip people out. Did it grab this group? Ooh, missed it by just a little bit, but uh, actually this wasn't drawn right. It should have been drawn there. Ooh, still missed it by just a little bit. Um, ended up getting the same reversal. And again, had you use one of the you know binaries or, or call spreads, guess what? When it, when, it, when it did this to take out futures traders, guess what happened? It came, it literally came right back down again, and we're stabilizing at a point where we absolutely should, right? We should be stabilizing right about here, and we're in the same spot. So, same basic trade setup we talked about. It. This was the weakest. It's still the weakest. Um, it did go, it did spike higher, and did run into, you know, a buzz of sellers as well. Um, but magically, it's amazing how it literally came up, started the base, parabolic move up, tried, and then failed miserably, and came up and did a failure to go higher, and then it started to collapse back down again. So, um, again. These things all start to kind of creep into the red. This should be the first one to go. And again, where it is right now, uh, it's got to chop through these people, but I think an overall eventual push down to 34, 253 is probably in the books for today. Uh, Russell. So Russell was the strongest, the same exact pattern. Uh, you can see looking across, you know, if I take this and put a horizontal line here, look to the left, it's like, oh, did it hit anything? Yeah, it did. I mean, there's a basing level right here. All right, right there, confirmed. touch okay so again looking for a reversal is no different than the rest i mean technically this is this is the strongest one it's up 1.4 percent but look at this pullback right now um and again coming down to an area right here where we should you know obviously you should be getting your profit before then but um yeah yeah nice little push down uh, and again all you're doing is looking for the top of things so uh not necessarily a horrible base trade and, and again 930 
Um, 9.30 is actually this one. So here's where we open. So from where we close, we're up. But from where we opened, we're basically right there, right? And within the first 15 minute candle, we're already below that. So technically reverse into the, the downside, even with a, uh, you know, with a minus 7% VIX. So interesting spot. Um, Apple, same thing. Apple is showing up, but it opened here at 9.30. We're below where we opened for the day. So yes, higher than where we closed but lower than where we opened on the day. And Tesla, probably the same thing. Yeah, Tesla's the same exact thing. The retail trader got in and said, oh my God, that's such great data. Core inflation is down, right? And then boop, 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 parabolic move right back to the downside. Um, interesting enough, this one got super close. Um, look at that. Super, super close to tagging that, uh, that gap initiation there. And that was a reversal point. So cool stuff. Um, let's go across the currencies, okay? So let's switch this back to a 30 minute. All right, so again, had a level of basing up top. You can see that this one ran right into it. This strong push to the top, you're like, oh my God, it's such a weak dollar move. Such a weak dollar move. I can't believe it. Core inflation moderate is down. The Fed saved us. And the reality is not really. <laughs> There's a little bit of a pullback on it and then push higher. And then it stopped and is reversing back down again. So, you know, again, New Zealand has some news tonight. It will help the Aussie a little bit. I think this one obviously is a, excuse me, am I as a short? Sorry, I want to get some more water there. Um, I would say I'm more bearish this position. Um, obviously, obviously, this week has some. Um, uh, it's not Monday. It's uh, Wednesday, right? Uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we have some Aussie data coming in. But we have plenty of time for this one to reverse back down, find some buyers, and have it take off again. So, again, this is the last time we had any basing. It was a level we marked off over here before. And, again, we were talking about when it broke through, go short. And, again, it fought, 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 it fought. It finally broke. And that's what it's run into right now. And it's kind of exhausted itself up really, I guess, I guess the actual level for it, if I had to draw, it would have been this green right here. Cause you can see we have like, a, you know, just barely brushed, brush, just barely brushed, just barely brushed into it. And that's actually what it ran into. So drawing was off a little bit. The end result is the same. Um, you know, they took the, the CPI number today as being, Oh my God, it's slowed down. It's over. But the reality is they're still raising interest rates. We're still at a 40 year high. So, um, it, it's great that they want to pat themselves on the back, but they're still going to raise interest rates and this will still bring dollar strength back into the market. As well as, again, as I mentioned before, with China locking down, we haven't heard tons out of it yet, but we are going to start hearing about how it's going to have, you know, lockdown, supply shortages, and that will directly hurt the Aussie. Um, and the Aussie, not so much because they buy things from there, but as China expands, China needs natural resources. The natural resources come from Australia. So as the Chinese economy is booming, so does Australia. If you lock it down, you're not doing a lot of building, a lot of going, you know, <laughs> really, you're not leaving your house. Um, yeah, you don't need as much stuff from Australia during that time. So I'd look for a reversal. Aussie yen looks very, very similar. Okay. Uh, we talked about this 50% level the other day. Actually, I guess I did that with my students, not yours, or not this group. Um, you can see that we came back and we did a lot of basic. We had, to, you know, it got turned away. It was like fighting, 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 fighting. It popped and then kind of went through. So the level seems to be a hot spot, but we'll remove it just to keep the analysis a little bit clean. Um, as you can see, if I pull this across, you can see that we literally came up to the 78.6. So we've basically hit all the major levels at this point on the way up. Um, again, 50 is the only one that really didn't matter. 61.8 slowed it down a little bit and then kind of reversed on us. And then again, the 70 weight was the most recent hit. Um, let's pull these off now. Um, I'll leave that there. I'm more curious to see. That's what I was curious about. Um, it's been through here. Oh, excuse me. I will say the one problem about allergies is the allergy medicine they give you. My God, it's like, it's, man, I don't know where everybody else is in the country, but I don't know if you guys had the allergies hit, but ours definitely hit this weekend. I can tell you that. And man, I hate everything about it. The medicine you have to take, the way they make you feel. I think I drank 12 gallons of water yesterday and I still feel like I'm dehydrated. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, anyway, I would say that 93 is a level to watch out for. 93.32. I actually would like to see this come down. Um, I would like to get long this position tomorrow before news. It's got a lot of time from now till tomorrow night. The yen got absolutely smashed yesterday. So again, today having it retraced, I think is is, is fine. Um, is this going to be the level to take it off of tomorrow night? It's only 26 pips away. Probably not enough room for it to run down. 
but there's a couple different levels a little bit lower. So the best way to handle this one is again, tune in tomorrow morning. Um, if it's in a good spot, we'll bring it up. Um, but right now we're what? 30 hours away from that release. So it's a little bit too soon, but I'd like to see this one kind of pull back down. Any type of basing again, gives us kind of an idea of where we want to get long. Uh, and, and again, for those of you that are unaccustomed with how to trade something like this, I mean, there are two hour binary contracts, nine to 11 that you can get into being 30 minutes before with the US market open close. The spread tends to not be too wide. It gives you a little bit of time. You can you know, have to get in right at nine o'clock. You can get at nine, nine fifteen, things like that. Wait for it to pull back to a level and it'll kind of foreshadow where you're gonna look at it. It's the same strategy we use for oil, the 35 and one, you just do it on the Aussie and you do it at night. And again, use two hour binary contracts for it. You can even use call spreads for it if you want. Um, Cause again, you have plenty of time for pullbacks, okay? Euro pound. Euro pound obviously continuing to deteriorate. Data out of the UK has been good. Data out of the Euro. Putin is like, we're not in a war anytime soon. Also not great for the Euro. So uh, again, we talked about this one continuing to push down. It finally found the top and then drove lower. So uh, let's move that. Let's kind of draw a new line up here just so we kind of have a new base on there. Uh, we're going to turn this yellow because it's not, you know, we don't know if we're going to take an actual trade off of that one. Let's pull that. Uh, didn't even make it to the 50 before reversing, so I'm not concerned about that. Let's go, actually, low to high is not going to make a difference at this point. Let's go high to low. Yeah, I'm trying to see what we had in there. A lot of chop in there. A lot of chop in there. Um, this down. All right, so we have two targets for this one on the downside. Uh, I think both of these are justified. I'd like to see what it does at this level. Uh, that price is, what, 83.13. I like how it based here. I like how we got to the European session right around two o'clock and it started to take off. I think that's our first target to the downside. And again, if you're not short, it's already a little bit late on this one. It only has to go 10 more pips. But this is an interesting spot to kind of take a roll off of. Either of these two really are. Their market's closed for the day, so there's not really a main driving factor or any force behind this right now. Um, I think either of these could be decent reversal levels, but remember, it's definitely off hours for them. Um, I would say probably this is where we're looking for this to drive down to. Um, to put this vertical line here. Tomorrow morning is really when we're looking to get into this one. Um, I actually don't like this one long because, again, I do think we'll have some positive data out of the, the, the EU. I'm sorry, the UK. Um, but I'd like to see what it does the rest of today. I'd really like for this to drive back up more than anything else. Um, Let's see how many is that? That's seven. That's nine down. Seventeen up. Hmm. It's kind of thinking now is so if we can get this to drop a little bit more, get a little bit of a reversal from now till the UK open. Kind of do one of these where we kind of pull down, right? We grab one of these two zones, right? And then you know if we run fibs from there, you're like, oh, listen, we're looking for a continuation of that. Now everybody expects the inflation to be good tomorrow. But if we get some type of a pullback to a 23.6 level before the news, I'm interested if, if it'd be worth getting into a short position um, in, in regards to seeing kind of a heightened inflation. Now, it may be weak. It may move up a little bit, you know, uh, but I'd like to see what it does from now till then. But the problem with this is the market is closed. There's not necessarily any driving factors for this anymore. It's all kind of through proxies. So a little bit harder of a trade right now. But, you know, I definitely think tomorrow morning, um, with this year over year, it's expected to be a big jump. If it comes in even higher than that, that's a big reason why they need to raise interest rates again and provide some good opportunity for go us to go short this position. Okay, uh, Euro yen, it's just retracing back from yesterday. We ended up going a little bit higher and we talked about multiple levels up here. Uh, I don't need this downside buys now. Um, actually, I guess let me run this. We're at a 50 right now. You know, that touch through here. I'm gonna pull that. I don't need this one anymore. Let's mark this up with recent data. Um, got one there. That was still good. We're gonna hold that one. 
There is one at the 61A, a nice little pullback. Hmm. That is interesting too. Check this out. So obviously there's some basing going on right here, right? You can see it. We hit it. We hit it again. We hit it again. Then we got a confirmation test here back on April 12th. Right now, that April 12th number just happens to be wedged between the 50 and the 61.8. So if we continue that across, you can see that's right in the wheelhouse of where a lot of traders, traders are getting in. If we had a pullback to this level, right? It's tested here. It's a 50%. So there's a couple different confirming things there all at the same time. If we're at the bottom right now, um, again, we're pretty much in close proximity. We can really go down to, you know, the 61.8 becomes like a magical number anywhere in here. So if we do a 61.8 reversal from the initial push, which I will say, this is definitely a level here, right? If we took a 61.8 push down to here and then pushed all the way up back into this 23.6 level here, well, it's actually a 61.8 in the other direction. That could provide an interesting kind of, uh, you know, pull back and forth. And it makes complete sense. 61.8 pull back here. When it pulls up to here, it is also the 61.8 on the other side. Right? And again, it's, I'm forecasting it down, by the way. It's, the, it's the here. It should be, sorry, it should, I guess it should be drawn the other way, but it's basically a pullback at this top. It's it's a retrace of this to here. That retracement is what the 618 is, just so in case that was confusing anybody. Basically, I'm, I'm stacking it twice. I'm looking for double numbers, okay? So that's kind of an interesting move. Again, I, I, you know, important ones to look at on this one is look how, what, how it reacts off of 135.43. And then if it pulls back up, you know, the matching number is 136.48. Uh, and then again, pulling back down, probably most likely a target for a lot of people will be 135.83 uh, on that one. Okay. Again, we're going over two or three days worth of movement here. But uh, again, all these reversals would make a whole lot of sense of where they're at. Euro dollar. <laughs> Wait a second. Bernard just said all of our inflation worries have been solved. Why is the dollar getting strength? Probably a couple of reasons. We look for this one to push down as well. Uh, it's kind of done a really choppy, slow kind of grind back and forth. Um, and again, I was forecasting using this one, right? That we were going to get down there. We're not there yet, but it's still kind of on its way. Um, again, they're going to raise U.S. interest rates. Europe, we'll see. It's going to be a little bit slower. Um, I keep talking about how 108 is on the window. We're only 36 pips from it. I do think we could potentially get down there before tomorrow evening. I'm sorry, tomorrow morning. Um, Maybe we'll see what the European session does. Uh, but again, CPI wise today, you may say, well, wait a second. I mean, here's the, this is a pot that said the data was so weak for the dollar. And all it did was really do what? And again, this is here. I'll delete, I'm going to confuse somebody. It's not, it's not actually the 50. I'm just going to say it's the 50 off my forecasted level, but there was your parabolic move. There is your base, right? There's your test of the base. There's your 830 news release, right? Here's your 830 news. What did it do on a 30 minute? It drove you right into a level that was a base and a confirmation touch. Uh, let's see, is it a, yeah, it was the fifth, it was between the 51 and 68. So you can say up until that time, taking the overnight high to low, you can go up and we were right around that 50 to 61, eight. Again, I like the supply and demand aspect of it. The fibs on this one would just be used to confirm it. And you can see right now we're obviously well below, but this was a, a great trade setup. Right there, and one to three is sitting right there. You can see it's gone well beyond the one to three at this point. Okay, so nice little again U.S. based data. Um, again, initial response is, "Oh my God, this is bad for the dollar," and then it's like, "Oh wait, never mind. They're still going to raise interest rates and easy reversal back down." But I think one oh uh, one oh eight, and even I mean potentially, depending on what you know tomorrow's data looks like and, and Thursdays, one oh seven fifty four by the end of the week in the euro dollar. Uh, pound yen. Okay, pound yen is being slow to kind of come back up. Um, obviously, yesterday, the yen just got absolutely just hammered. You know, a lot of weak comments out of them. They were okay with it. Uh, remember, a weak yen is good for Japan. Um, you know, you would think, wait, weak, wait, that's bad, right? Uh, no, not for them. Um, they're an export nation, so they want it weak, so people buy more stuff from them. Um, it's just it's just slowly cycling back down again. So, um I'd say right now, kind of the same thinking. Um, I'd be looking to take, you know, right now I would be short this position, but we have the big CPI data coming in for tomorrow. Question is, can we get back to a level down here? 
And I would say that that's probably a decent mover. Again, for if this, then that trader is right around 162, uh, 162, 62, right? Um, it would be right about there. And again, it's a base level. Um, if we took it fib wise from when we used the breakout, uh, it is wedged between the 50 and 61.8. Um, again, a little bit lower risk using 62.62, but it uh, obviously matches, uh, again, confirmed with fibs, uh, but standard supply and demand inside of that same range, as well as we combine it with news trading. So a couple different areas there. Um, what it would look like would be something along these lines. Pound dollar, man, we're close. We're looking for the pullback. Um, maybe some people were looking to get in here, but again, no entry here. This is a drop and it kind of kind of popped back and forth. I don't know if I would consider that like an actual true basing at all. Maybe you did, you got stopped out and pulled back to the same level. I think the, st the trade still works. We're looking for a confirmation entry on this pound dollar trade. Um, you know, again, Euro dollar versus pound dollar. I, I hands down, I like Euro dollar short. I'm a, I have a little bit more difficulty taking pound dollar right now uh, short only because it's strong pound versus strong dollar. Overall, in the, in the grand scheme of things, I do think the dollar is still stronger than the pound. But right now, the pound does have some inherent strength inside of it as well. Again, seeing inflation, they have a big news data point tomorrow morning. If it is higher than expected, they're going to have to raise another 0.25. That'll be an entire percentage point that they've gone up over the last four raises. So I do think that is, you know, again, another strong pound aspect to it. Um, on a purely technical basis, if we can go through and get a decent base, like I'd want more than just one hiccup of a base. I'd want something that looks more like this, you know, like something like this, two or three candles, right? Not just a strike down. And again, this is like a little hiccup at 230 and then immediately pop back up. Like to see kind of a somewhere where I could put a triangle in, right? That's that's I always tell people it's more of a triangle. Like this would have been a great base. Any of these really okay. Um, but I'm still looking for a break of 130. I mean, 130 is a huge psychological level. But it'd be a, a good confirmation back down again, um, pushing this one down into the 129s, low 129s. Dollar CAD, you can see Dollar CAD has retraced all the way back again, back to a level of comfort down at 126. Um, problem with this one right now is with oil being around, I mean, oil's at what, five bucks since the close yesterday? Um, we're at $100 right now. We were at 93 when we, we started Monday morning. So it's up a lot. It's smacking a lot of dollar strength in. Um, I would say right now, I wish I had a better, let's see. Fortunately, there's not. Um, delete this off. I'm looking for. I'm looking for a good level of basing. And obviously, if you mark this level out, there's a ton of basing in there, right? And again, was the was the top over here? Was the bottom over here? Kind of peeked its way out of it. Hmm. This is just such a huge number. Um, it's at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'd like to see what this one does tomorrow morning between 8 and 10. I'd like to see what direction it sends it in. So it would be nice if there was a sealed envelope and nobody knows what the pound or the, the, the CAD raise actually is going to be. The question I have for them is with oil, the way that it's moving, are they going to use the oil's instability as a reason why they only did a 0.25 and not a 0.5 to kind of mess with things up there, right? If they did a 0.25, that's going to be considered weak Canadian, which is going to be a long on this chart. If they come up with a 0.5, I would assume that the market maybe, you know, kind of has a factor in already. It's what was forecast. Um, really, on both accounts, both of these are long dollar CAD trades tomorrow morning for news. But I'd like to see what happens tomorrow morning early, see where the market moves, what kind of pullbacks happen before the actual release. I think that's going to give us the telltale sign of which way to take it. Um, remember, again, they're supposed to be raising their interest rates by 0.5%, right, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, extremely important. I don't want to tell you something now. You know, again, if it skyrockets right beforehand, again, it's probably more of a down. It's a 0.5. If it does the opposite, it's probably 0.25, and we're going to see this pair rally tomorrow. Okay, dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss. We got this Harry Potter trade. We have not got an entry. Um, I can you know click on it again. It's not. It hasn't been. You know, we don't have an entry yet. We're trying. 
but I love the fact that it actually chopped through that level a bit, a little bit. Chop, 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 chop. We're getting ready for this trade setup. And again, if you guys are you know familiar with this, what this is, it's when we get a confirmation entry, a drop, a base, and then a pullback, not in one motion. Below 92.89, looking for this one to push all the way down into the 92.57 area, right? Um, nice little 30 pip drop on that one when it finally comes through. Um, we'll see. Um, some of the data this week could give us a hand with that one, um, but I think right now it's more of a, a bit of a retracement than anything else. Um, actually, right now, I'm not surprised it's popping up. That initial response at 8.30 was, oh, my God, this is weak dollar. And then it's like, oh, wait, just kidding. No, it's not. They're still going to raise interest rates. So it's just coming back up. We'll see when we can reestablish a trend. Dollar yen. That you can see dollar yen at super, super close to that 23.6. Uh, it actually did come down to the spacing level right here, and that's what it ran into. Um, I think this one probably continues to drop today. I don't know that there's a really great trade setup out of it. Um, I mean, I guess I'm sure somebody was in in this, right? I'm sure somebody looked at this and said, hey, it's a 50% retracement level. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to use the 6180 as a stop loss on that one. I'm going to continue to see this drop. And and you absolutely could have. I mean, you know, again, the most important thing is everybody thinks it's your strategy. It's not your strategy that what matters most. It's the way that you handle risk that matters the most. Um, it, is this a viable strategy or a viable trade that you could have traded if you were like a, a primary or solo FIB trader? Yeah, absolutely. And you got about two thirds of the way before it pulled back up to where it was. Um, I think fundamentally, uh, again, was the dollar justified to be super weak today? No. Right. But it's kind of matching up the way that it should. So, you know, right now you could have been into this one. Um, you'd be at, a, at about break even right now. You were up two to one at one point. Um, make it two for that one that you were risking. So it's there, but I, I do think it kind of probably continues to grind down until we get a little bit more data or another headline about, um, like an, an actual, like a, a good headline. Um, you know, I think this, this is, I don't, I don't know why they do this. Um, I don't know why they do this. They state the obvious. It's like, I need a headline. Inflation is bad. Okay, there we go. We got it. She said inflation is bad. It's kind of one of those things, I guess. We all know the commodity prices are driving inflation. That's what we feel the most. That's what we care about the most. Um, and this is just, a, I'm going to pat myself on the back. Um, Russia's inflation, right? The invasion of Ukraine screws inflation risk to the upside. Does it jack inflation or does it jack the commodities? Okay, it's the commodities shock, but they were already moving that direction. Um, and again, is the actual invasion what drove it, or is it the politics behind the invasion that drove it? It goes back to the politics. Uh, OPEC said the same thing. We're not going to, you know, we're, we're looking at the data. We're not changing our output. We're leaving politics out of actual economic policy. Um, I don't see Fed policy tightening as inconsistent with lowering inflation, sustaining the recovery. So Bernard basically says, hey, you guys can deal with it. <laughs> Sorry. Have fun. Good. This is why she probably won't be around next year. So uh, this is the number, this is her, her statement right here. This is the number one thing right now that is driving the, all the polls in the election is inflation. And she says, oh, we're, it's inconsistent. We don't need to tighten, you know, lowering inflation, we're, you know, we, you know, recovery, recovery. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go look at this actual commodity. So, yeah, this is what she says doesn't matter. Um, we came all the way up past the 50. So let's remove fifths from that one. We don't need it. Came all the way up to 78. Let's reverse this now and see if we can get something on the other side. Um, yeah, I mean, the little hiccup right here. There you go. There's something we may be shooting for. Um, yeah, according to her, don't worry about it. Higher gas prices is great. You know, there's no there's no proof, according to her, I guess, that, um, you know, when gas is over, what is it, 450 or whatever, $4 a gallon, that it hurts our economy. It does, just FYI. Um, well, according to her, it doesn't matter. So we should be happy. I'd say right now in oil, I'd look for some type of a pullback. Uh, you can see that the 23.6 level on this one uh, is around 99.38. Um, right now, it's it looks like it's running into buyers trying to stabilize and support it around 100. Uh, yesterday morning, I said 93 seems on a really low side, so you can get week-long positions to the top side. With any type of a pullback on this one, and whether it's here, the magical 23.6, um, I actually like it lower, I think, uh, actually at 97.83. Um, or even 97.24 um, are probably both good levels. Um, I think there's a lot of pullback. Remember, the API report comes out today at what 4:30, and then we have the um, the inventory tomorrow morning. Uh, let's see, do we have? 
Uh, they give us a forecast yet. Uh, yeah, they're saying it's basically dead flat. Dead flat. 0 0.1. We're going to keep our inventories exactly stable the way that they were. I don't know. I've never seen it. That's very rare that it gets that way. So it looks like it's already set up for a miss. So last week we had that big surplus. Question is, are they going to revise that? God forbid. Maybe it's negative this week. Maybe everybody drove. Again, inflation is not a big deal. Maybe they drove more this week. So I don't know. Look for tomorrow morning, the 10 3. Uh, I'm sorry, the 35 and 1. You guys know the strategy. Uh, it was a great setup last week. Again, we'll cover it tomorrow morning at 8 30 um, as we get that one ready to go. Natural gas. Still grinding. Now, natural gas took a pop, came back down again. Again, this is going to be based off of political headlines right now. Again, I don't, you know, anytime we pull back for me in my eyes is a buying opportunity. I think this one still has more to go. I think if we keep prodding Russia, Russia is going to be like, you know what? You wanted to hurt me as much as possible. I get it. There's natural gas. If he could find a buyer for his natural gas contracts right now, since Europe wants to dump them anyway, if he could actually get a buyer for those other things, he's going to turn the spigot off to Europe. And they're going to be pissed off about it. But in reality, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, like you you said, we're going to be we're, we're not going to use your stuff anymore. OK, well, he's a businessman. If you're not going to buy my goods, I'm going to find somebody that did. OK, OK. <laughs> I mean, it's it is what it is. I just think this one has to be able to go higher on fundamental reasons. So be very, very cautious getting short natural gas um, again. Can we hit seven dollars? So we got up to look at this. We got up to six ninety five. 695 we got up to wonder if we can break seven before this is all over that's a crazy number crazy number um but i think it's it's on the radar i think it's a feasible area um gold gold continued to go higher you know why because she just made these idiot comments about well oh, it's not a big deal this is good right but initially it was like oh god it's 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 you know we're still going okay pull back a little bit right Again, the pullback happened because the, the retail trader got online, got stopped out. It continued to push higher. So, again, I think getting, you know, getting short gold is is the right thing to do. Um, I'm pretty sure based off of her comments, whether it be Mester or Bullard gets in here and says something, uh, they will talk about the need that, listen, we're at 40-year highs. Um, again, I, I, I kind of foreshadowed to her earlier. There's the article that Biden only has one weapon to reduce inflation. It's basically to remove all the tariffs on China. Which basically says China, it's okay that you guys have an unfair scenario situation. You know what? It's okay because inflation is more important to our dollar than you stealing proprietary technology from all of our companies. So go ahead. I don't know that he'll use that because I feel like, uh, again, I don't even know if you can remove to, even if he would use that weapon. But that's about the only thing he has. And he said it would be a 1% reduction in inflation. But is that even enough? Like, would people even be happy with that? I don't know. But I think getting, you know, the way that this is looking right now with these lower highs, I think that this is a, a great opportunity right here for shorts. Um, again, do we take it now? Eh. Again, the, the gold market is about to close. But I think, uh, again, the rest of the week, I think we look for shorts here. Um, not only in gold, but particularly in silver as well. You know, silver, we're, we're, we're continuing to have this one drive up. Where we are now, if this is at the top, there is an interesting level now that is confirmed right at the 50. So that's one you definitely want to mark off on your radar, 2485. Um, but again, any type of bad news, I expect silver to... I expect as soon as this gets a bit, you know, is acknowledged as a bad situation, I think uh, silver goes before oil does. And again, I think silver springs in again. Second gold's negative. Silver should double itself up and go to the downside. So I think there's a, a short silver potential for the rest of this week. Um, Bitcoin again hovering just above forty thousand. That's a big deal. It's up one percent from yesterday, but not necessarily the best. And again, I haven't seen any comments from her yet, but. Um, yeah, I would expect we see, we see some Ethereum, Dogecoin, all also. They were up a lot more. They're all starting to get weaker. And TLT itself is actually also dropping down now as well. So, you know, interesting scenarios out there. You can see that the uh, the meme stocks are obviously having it pretty rough. Um, Apple and Tesla are also both looking like they're going to be more short this afternoon, uh, particularly Apple with the way that it's kind of fighting and sitting down here with the lower highs. Not also necessarily the best. And uh, guess what? NQ just tagged our profit target as well. So, uh, again, it looks like all of our shorts from this morning um, are also coming to fruition. And again, YM the weakest. Actually, look at this. YM is now just hit our profit target. It's only up 0.19 or say 0.2. ES is up 0.23. ES is up 0.46. So they're all starting to get to the stage now where they're getting back into uh, potentially ending up on a red day. So, all right. With that said, uh, that is it for today. Market calendar is off for next week, April 19th. Um, April 19th. It's my kids, my it's my son's birthday. My sons will be 12 next week. Uh, Phew, it's amazing time flies. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, whoops, I went too fast. 
My email address is support at keeptradingsimple.com. You're more than welcome to ask me any question. Uh, obviously, this week's a little bit crazy. My kids are home on spring break, and allergies decided all to dump on us. It was it was 37 degrees uh, two days ago, and it is now 70, 71 degrees outside right now. So between allergies and, and <laughs> pressure changes, yeah, it may take me a couple extra days. But anyway, you guys are more, well, more than welcome to message me if you want. Anyway, thank you for joining today. Uh, I'll catch you next week, or if you guys can attend the live sessions in the morning, 8.45 to 9 a.m., on YouTube, uh, just go there, search Nadex, go click the, the follow icon and hit the subscribe so you know when we're going live. Uh, Ty catches every morning. There were some great setups from this morning that ended up coming to full fruition. So with that said, I'm out of here. Take care. Have a good trading day.